Kopojutsu is essentially a method. Kopojutsu is the art uh, whose uh, primary, primary purpose is to cause damage or injury to the bones, to articulations, and at some point later on to soft tissues. Now, in the case of Kopojutsu, there are uh, especially two key origins for it. One of it is Jujutsu. We see many techniques and many ways of moving in Kokojutsu that resemble a lot many forms and principles of Jujutsu and on the other hand we have Aiki Jujutsu as well there are many similarities and uh, there are actually many uh, many principles that unless they are quite well explained it is not easy to be understood so um, this last one the, the the origin of Kokojutsu found in Aikijutsu is quite controversial and interesting because if we think, well, which one came first, Kokojutsu or Aikijutsu? And, and um, for us to answer that, it's important to recall briefly that both Kokojutsu and Aikijutsu, they were not um, a whole art, a complete art from day to night. So it is thought that Aikijutsu uh, was later on uh, developed, enhanced to a, a higher degree, to a higher level, but it was mostly uh, condensed into a named art, the art of Aikido Jutsu. Yoshimitsu no Minamoto so did this, this great work and it is very often um, appointed and seen as the creator of Aikido Jutsu. Uh, however, we have to um, we have to have in mind that um, many of those techniques and uh, many of those principles uh, used in this so-called uh, so new art of Aikijutsu at that time in history, they already existed in many, and it was uh, spread uh, in many uh, clans and tribes and families of that time. So it was not something brand new at all. And um, well, with Kokojutsu we can go even further. The origins, the, the real roots of Kokojutsu, uh, we cannot trace it back to a pinpoint location or period in, in time. So Kokojutsu is, in essence, a method. Um, it's a common um, trick question during exams. For example, when the examination committee asks for a student to show um, this kata of Kopo, for instance. If you, and uh, so he shows the correct set of techniques or he shows techniques of a particular method of Kokojutsu. However, um, there is no kata, no formal kata in Kokojutsu. And if we go back even, even more, if we go backward, we'll see that uh, in our school, uh, Kokojutsu is gathered and it was organized as a full set of methods. Now, it is very important to realize that there are some, some key differences between uh, Kopojutsu and Aikijutsu, and Kenpo and Jujutsu. There are some um, specificities of each of these arts that uh, shall be you know, well understood for a good practice. Uh, I can see many walks, many techniques in Kokojutsu, but uh, my, my doubt is, uh, what is the main principle of the study of the Kokojutsu? Well, see, Kokojutsu basis is based on the idea of isolating what we call pliers or tweezers, for this matter, and supports. So, let's see. So, 
for example, uh, suppose you describe with a ski. So in Popo, the main idea, first of all, is to isolate what we call plier from the support. So what is this? What is the concept for each, each of these? The idea is that plier is everything that grabs, that pinches some hole, or uh, usually the tip or the extremity of your body, the place where you put your final power, let's say. So the whole power of your body will somehow reach its destination, but especially when it's something that you grab. So the idea is that um, the wire is the point that will make contact or the point through which your, your power will be conducted and applied. And on the, on the other hand, we have the support. The support is everything that will um, support and uh, uh, act as the, the main structure that will, um, how can I say that, that may provide what is needed for this power to be applied through your apply, through your appliance, okay? So for example, um, in Popo, our idea is usually to allow you to come to the very end of your movement and then isolate what is plier from what is support. So with this, for example, um, it is quite difficult for you to um, to uh, uh, put your power in your arm or in your hand or in your wrist. So the idea here after this, for example, would be to isolate even more uh, your hand, the action of your hand from your arm. But here I have an issue. If I'm staying here, you could easily yet, although you have uh, your, your hand in a very fragile position, you could still use the rest of your body. Exactly. So just this last movement means that you have recomposed yourself. So the idea, for example, would be first of all that you reach your final extension. Okay? So as I'm here, I will isolate this part of your body. And in Koko Jutsu, what you see is this. You see that the, my technique, my weight must overwhelm uh, structurally your body so that the power returns and locks uh, usually your shoulder, your scapula and the, uh, your, your back and the back of your, your hara. So from here it is quite difficult for you to react or to move. Or, and so even if I keep moving on, say from here, I still have to isolate a part of your body like this, stretching the most I can. And your weight is all centered here, so it's quite difficult for you to keep on. So, continue. So, first of all, we have to realize that it is quite different. This notion, this sense um, of setting apart plier and support uh, is quite different in Kopo and Aiki Jujutsu. Because for this matter, what we'll do in Kopojutsu is we will attack the pliers. And that happens just as opposite in Aiki Jujutsu. So let's see, one more time. For example, let's suppose you attack anywhere, anywhere you want, let's say you, you grab here. Exactly. So I cannot move straight from here, attempting some, some, some lock or something to be foolish. So the idea is soft tissues soft parts of your body, or the usage of what we call of the Ateni in Kokojutsu, that is quite a very interesting subject. For example, there are two main lines of study of Ateni in Kokojutsu. Remembering that this, even this word Ateni is something very uh, new, recent, and um, in our school uh, we don't have this. Actually, it is quite um, a mistake to, to think that we would have a set called a temi jutsu as something old, as something that was already in our roots. This is not true at all. Um, what I can tell you is actually what was told to me by Shidoshi Jordan Augusto. 
by my, my master for all these years and um, um, what we what we have what has come to us what has reached us um, is that as a matter of fact the Shizen people at their time did not have anything organized and neat as you see for example in the later I think you in the later temple with everything in its own place with its own name, you know, a precise name for everything. Not at all. Actually, not just for Koko, but for all the arts they had. So, for example, um, when I was just a student, for example, this would happen a lot. Say, well, now we're going to study, study about Futetsu, for example, or we're, we'll study about this method of Koko, this method of Aikijus. So, later on, I mean, in the last century especially came the need for um, reorganizing and putting, you know, uh, labeling everything and understanding everything. That was work uh, done especially by Motoshima Sensei and Ogawa Sensei. Once again, according to my teacher and to the instructions that I have had all these years. So, coming back to our study, say for example, you enter in Atsuki. So it is foolish to think that from here I can try to apply some lock. So enter ski, your base will be hard, your body will be hard and stiff, so you won't move at all, okay? So it is foolish to think that I would be able to apply any kind of lock in here if you don't want to, or your body uh, stiff, hard, and, and uh, ready to attack one more time with your hand, with, your, with any part of your body. So uh, many times, Several times you had a very hard foe, a very hard enemy with their, uh, with its uh, his physical structure very hard and uh, well prepared. So uh, it would be an illusion to think that you would touch him or you know, strike him once or twice in a prepared and stiff body, a rough body, and uh, thinking that you'd be able to complete any kind of locks or techniques or movements. Uh, this is of course an illusion. So. There is in Kobo a particular study of what is now called Atemi. Now, for the ancient Shizen people, what, what we have is the way of uh, applying your power, of putting your of transmitting your power. So in the case of Kobo, it is called Ketsubo, that is the act of uh, striking. Um, you will strike in the the inertia of your hand or uh, of your elbow or of your attack will go on, particularly applying pressure in a you know in a, a weak angle or in a weak part of its body. But the idea was always to attempt to break the bone. We are here, so you enter and you enter. I I block your attack, and from here I will enter directly. Okay. When I enter, you block my attack. Very nice. So they had all these ways and methods. For example, your, your arm is hardened here. It's, it's tough. Exactly. So they have um, successfully blocked my attack. And your arm is rigid. So they had the, the idea of using, for example, this so they could move on. So they had many of these very interesting um, angles and moves that is I'll enter you block and you block whatever you wish. Whenever you have blocked and you enter one more time, whenever I have stopped using the arm like this and moving not like this, but moving, and that means you put all your power in the very last uh, portion of your body. So your your arm is hardened here, very nice, hard. Your muscle is sustaining everything, and the idea is to break as a hammer, so they could move on. One more time, you can see the idea of isolating the plier from the support. That is, it is quite difficult for you to, you know, to resist. This is the point. The idea is always to. This idea of isolating wire from support. And here comes also the idea of explosion in Koko. 
because these movements, as I said, they are part of a method. And a method will never assure a consequence. So uh, they would attempt with their moves and the, all the exercises to violently break parts of the body. Uh, this, uh, we are talking about the very roots of the principles of Kopo Jutsu, as we have asked 